welcome to the Christ Life. And I know that you know I say that every time. Yes. Because it is really our prayer that you do move into the Christ Life because it's what we talk about every week. And what we talk about this week and next week, not that it's more significant, but we certainly want to bring greater clarity to the Christ Life. Yes. Because we, um, we live in a world where now... What started out to really, it didn't start out this way, but what ended up being six main divisions in Christianity now is, they say, over 20,000 different uh, uh, denominations. So it's, 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 there's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of beliefs. And what Rex and I wanted to do today is kind of bring you a little bit more into conversation that we had yesterday. We, when we talked yesterday, we were kind of talking through this. I just went away from our conversation, just so excited, because when you talk about the Christ life in the manner in which we're going to talk about it, it just, your your spirit becomes alive and excited because the spirit gets excited. Uh, Because ultimately the Christ life is, is, it is simple. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to work through all the different stuff. You just go back to the person who got all that stuff started. And when you go back to Jesus, who started everything else, and you come back there, then not only is it simple, but it's also universal. It's true, you know, where we're at in Fort Worth, Texas, and it's true in South America and Africa and Europe, everywhere. And I just believe that the Lord is doing something in these last days that he is really bringing us back to uh, that, that place where his life is our life. Now, in the, in, in the New Testament, we, we, we begin to get a glimpse of it. We're going to talk about uh, how the church viewed themselves, they, yes. what they called themselves. They, that was something very clear. It wasn't Christians. Uh, Christ, being called Christians, really, you have to move into Acts chapter 11, verse 26, to really see in Antioch where they first called them Christians, which when the world did that, it was a derogatory term. I know eventually, because it's really Christians, they, they took it on as a form of identity. I think today it's certainly diluted. It's it's perverted in some of uh, in some of the ideas of what that actually means. And uh, uh, but before that, they were actually called the way they were. They they saw themselves that way because of what uh, ultimately uh, Jesus said early on, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. And I don't want to get ahead of myself because I get excited and do that. But don't uh, we all? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Paul, even when he was sent out with the letters, his to to wreak havoc on the church, it was they, they were they weren't. They were called the way, the sect of the way. He could go after them. He had a document yes. stating that that reality. And uh, we have to understand that this was before the New Testament was written. This this was the... We I t- like that, by the way. That yeah. was, ooh. Well, I can't do it on my oh. iPad. You know, uh, but, <laughs> then I'll but, have to clean it again. Yeah, but the... the uh, <laughs> Now you're really getting into our conversations because that's a we're constant. Invite right. them into that's what we true. do with each other. Absolutely, yeah. the 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 scriptures were they were written based off their experience. And let me even just say this a different way: it really was written off their relationship that led to experience. And and so and what has happened is because of all of the all of the stuff, because of all of the theologians. And I'm not against theologians. I I believe I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. I believe you constantly want to learn and grow and expand. But ultimately. When you think about the Christ life, it comes back to the relationship with Jesus. Yeah. What caused the early church to expand and extend throughout the known regions uh, is, is uh, this relationship that was not just a tagline. They weren't going around going, this isn't religion, it's a relationship. They yeah. were in a living, loving relationship with Jesus. Jesus was alive to, as alive to them in that day as he was before the cross. He was alive to them, and everywhere they went, that's what they were. Uh, that's what they were stressing. That's yeah. where they're really moving people to. And so we we really want to spend you know today and uh, and next week really just kind of talking about the people of the way. Yeah, because our theme for the whole year is is this issue of direction. Yeah. And so you know the, you're being directed onto a pathway. We're mm-hmm. we are following a pathway, but it's not a religious pathway. It's not a theological pathway. It's not some prescribed uh, list of do's and don'ts and punch list of uh, yes and no. It's actually, uh, as you said it, it's, it's, it's both kind of simple and yet it's universally applicable because it depends upon the living presence of Christ. It's a relational reality. 
And so, you know, because we know the Lord, because we live with the Lord, because we walk with him and we live our lives within him, uh, this is, we could say it a thousand different ways. I, I was birthed into uh, the things of the kingdom of God in the days of the Jesus movement. And we called ourselves Jesus people. And that's kind of what the New Testament believers called themselves, effectively, Jesus people. That's where they got this idea of being people of the way. And it, it's a really interesting thing to me that uh, they weren't called that. Uh, the self-identifier that they use is people of the way. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what we want to get to here, that they were... They were they they had this idea and they got it from somewhere, but it was a self-identifier. They didn't call themselves Christians. It was the people who were trying to describe them in Antioch and were associating their behaviors, their attitudes, their miraculous empowerment uh, with the only one they could associate it with, which was Christ. And so they said, "Those these are Christ's deans." Uh, in in Jerusalem when they wanted to speak about these people, they would typically call them Nazarenes because that was a pejorative. That was a, that was a kind of a thing of saying, well, well, they're not exactly the sharpest tools in the shed. Their, their leader was a country bumpkin guy from Nazareth. And so uh, that would have been the label they would have put on them, them as well. And so these are not labels that are coming from outside. This is a self identify. This is a testimony where they are saying, we are people of the way. And it became that well known that, as you said, when Paul went uh, to uh, Damascus specifically and to other places to seek to uh, persecute people, to drag them out of their homes, to, to challenge them, to deny that they were people of faith, he asked for legal permission to persecute people of the way. That was the label that they understood and that they would not deny. I think that's a powerful truth, yeah. that they they were willing to die because if you're going to just say, I've got to give up Jesus or give up my life, Jesus is my life. And so go ahead, kill away. And and so this is the reality. And and it's a it's a powerful truth. They saw themselves as people of the way. But why? That's, that's what we want to get to. Why did they do this? Well, because they had been trained to do this. It it's really goes back to uh, John chapter 14, which is a powerful set of verses where Jesus is talking. Now, uh, John 13 through 17, and, and then on into the early part of the book of Acts, kind of describe this 40 plus day, 43 day, let's say, period. Uh, the 40 days is mentioned in the book of Acts. That for after the resurrection of Christ for 40 days, he went and trained his disciples. He taught them concerning the things of the kingdom of God. This is a powerful thing. But he actually started that training long before then, when he, when he began to tell them that I'm not going to be with you forever, that it's good for you that I'm going away, uh, but there's going to be a change in the relationship. There's going to be a transference of this power to you. This ministry is going to start that I've had is now going to be your ministry. This way and method of operation is now going to be your method of operation. This is a powerful time in the ministry of Christ. And so the reason they called themselves people of the way is because Jesus had identified himself as the way. And they were saying, we're Christ life people. We're Jesus people. So we're people of the way. Uh, and I love the fact that Thomas had the boldness in John 14 to say, Jesus is saying, look, I'm going away. It's a good thing I'm going away. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. You're going to be empowered the same way I'm going to be. It's going to be awesome for you guys. And you already know the way and where I'm going. And Thomas is the one who goes, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm clueless. I don't think I know where you're going. I certainly don't know the way. And Jesus then pipes out this powerful, one of the seven I am statements that John records that he says, I am the way. I am, which was the great, you know, statement of faith. I am the I am that I am. I am the way. And so this is the reason they called themselves people of the way, because uh, the reason and the season of this 43 day period of time was really one of uh, transference and training. And so th those are key words that I think we need to want to focus on for a minute. He's transferring his authority and his power to the believers, mm -hmm. the same kind of way that I've ministered. And this is what John 
13 through 17 speaks about mm -hmm. the same way I've ministered, you're going to minister. The same way I know the Father, you're going to know me and the Father. The same Holy Spirit that empowers me and has empowered me to this ministry is going to empower you. And so there is this transference of uh, this ministry and a bit of a training that goes with that. Mm -hmm. He taught them concerning, for 40 days, he taught them concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Well, that's powerful because this is the... Uh, the season of their ministry. So that's the reason this is the season of their ministry uh, was uh, to express and expand this kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to teach you concerning the things of the kingdom of God to release you to do what? Uh, early believing people, these, these believing people, man, woman, boy, girl, wouldn't have mattered. They would have never thought that what God has called me to is to live a quiet, peaceable life and just kind of, you know, attend church on a Sunday and, and you know, not get into, you know, not go to jail, not get into too much trouble, uh, you know, pay my tithes uh, and basically live a satisfied life for the Lord where, where even if nobody knows that I'm a believer, they would have never conceived of such a life. They would have never said, that's all God wants from me. They, they were people of the way. They were people of the kingdom. They understood that the rulership of God was, was being challenged in the earth by the darkness and the sin and the demonic realm and the wickedness of people and all these 30,000 ideologies about how you could know God. This was, this was a work of the enemy, and God had come to right that wrong, to establish the leadership of the Lord God Almighty on the earth. This is the stuff of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so their goal as believing people, the way that they would travel was to express and expand the kingdom of God. And so they lived these lives with, uh, with a powerful sort of a dominion mindset. And I don't want to say that in a way that confuses you, but that God is in charge. You may think you run the show, but God does. You may think that God is at only one, well, like I did. I actually believe that God wound up the universe, kind of walked away. But but imagine my surprise and delight now to know that he didn't. He is invested into and involved in an every day, everywhere, with every one kind of basis. This is the stuff of the kingdom of God. And so for them, this was personal. This was powerful. This was Pentecostal. It was Holy Spirit empowered. It was a public thing. They were involved in this on a day-by-day -day basis. Everyone, everywhere they went. We'll talk about that a little more when we get to the way of the Lord. But but this was what they understood as mm -hmm. the way. Yeah. This was the pathway. You know, that's that that's where we really drive the the word Christ life. There there is a way that we live and we live the Christ life. And for yes. them, they didn't struggle with that. When, when, when uh, Paul writes about living peaceable lives, uh, the, the, that whole idea is that I don't have to make a cause that's going to change this world. Jesus will come back and change the world. Yeah. But in his kind of kingdom, he changes the world, Lee. And so mm -hmm. as, as I'm moving from person to person, as, as, I, as I'm living my life, not having to, you know, not having to change the country or change the world, uh, I'm in this relationship with the king. And, and on the way, and this is, I think, a, a dynamic of the kingdom that he taught that we have forgot. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's this, that wherever the king is, there's the kingdom. And so wherever you and I go, yes. he's with us. There's the kingdom. Yes. And so the, that life really differentiated them from everybody else out there. You know, that's, that's why he took such a, a, a wide scope, a broad scope of different types of people from tax collectors to zealot to fishermen. Mm. Because you can bring all that together and focus on the life of Christ and all be going in the same direction. Amen. And we've gone so many different directions. But I want to look a little bit in this uh, in, in Acts chapter 24, because what you find is you find Paul coming before Felix and you, you get a, a greater understanding of the power of uh, the identity of being the way. Okay, what we would say, I would, we would say it this way. Paul was on trial there because he was living the Christ life. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't find people in America on trial for living the Christ life, Christ life, in part because you really just don't find that many people actually living the Christ life. If the Christ life well may said. may not throw you in jail, but it may make you lose your job. Yeah. Oh, heaven forbid. Mm -hmm. uh, but but when the early church moved about, they had one cause. 
And it was that relationship with Jesus and what he said to do, they did. And so you find here, and starting in verse two, and we're going to jump around a little bit, not jump around, we're going to hold out parts of the scripture because it's just not relevant to what we're talking about. But it starts out just when he had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him saying, since, um, since through you we enjoy much peace and since by your foresight most excellent Felix, sounds like he's talking to a politician right there. It does. Reforms are being made for this nation in every way and everywhere we accept this with all gratitude. But, and there's the backside of everything right there, but, to detain you no further, I beg you in your kindness to hear us briefly. For we have found this man a plague. That's a powerful statement that they're making about Paul. We found this man to be a plague, one who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the world and is a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, which you referenced earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, He even tried to profane the temple, but we seized him by examining him yourself. You will be able to find out from him all about everything of which we've accused him. Now, the Jews, because he was kind of the lawyer, the Jews also joined in the charge, affirming that these things were so. And when the governor had nodded to him to speak, Paul replied. Why don't you go ahead and take it from there? I will, yeah. This this is what Paul says. He said, I am confessing to you, that's to Felix, that according to the way which they call a sect, I do worship the God of our fathers, believing everything laid down by the law and written in the prophets, having hope in God, Uh, which these men themselves accept, that there will be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. And so I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward both God and man. Now, notice what he says. He said, I confess, not that I'm a Nazarene, I confess that I am a person of the way. And part of that is because he knows that Felix has an understanding of people of the way. And that's exactly what the scripture says. He having an accurate knowledge of uh, who these people of the way were. He had had been somehow exposed to people who were living this Christ life. He was able to say, okay, now I have a handle on what the accusation is. You know, this it and it's so it's it takes it to a whole new realm. But the idea that we're trying to get across is that this idea of being people of the way was something that they weren't they weren't, you know, anti wanting to be known as that. Paul had said, Paul went with letters to kill and persecute and punish people of the way. And now he says, when he is on trial for his life, he says, I am one of them. <laughs> I am a person of the way. I think that's awesome. Oh, it really is. And I, so what, here's, we're going to take just a couple minutes yeah. because this week we want to just at least, you know, talk a little bit about uh, the, the way to the Lord. Uh, and when we talk about the way to the Lord, we actually, for the most part, don't spend need to spend a lot of time here because uh, universally, worldwide, the way to the Lord in, in what would be called Christianity today is, is pretty agreed upon. It's when you start talking about the way of the Lord mm-hmm. that all the theologians and all I think the we'll stuff, talk about that next week. We're going to talk about that <laughs> next week because we have to spend more time there yes. because yeah. everybody and his brother and sister and sister's best friend mm-hmm. have written about the way of the Lord. And everybody has their own opinion on the way of the Lord. And we want to that is where we're going to come back and bring a simplistic and yeah. very universal approach to that. But the way of the way to the Lord, first and foremost, is clear. Now, that's the the God has made. It's so that every man will be without excuse. All you have to do is, and Paul talks about this in Romans, is look to the heavens. Look at the glory uh, and the splendor that is all around us. And, and, and that causes a person to go, wait a minute. That just didn't randomly happen. I know we've got people with maybe even multiple PhDs that are still as dumb as rocks. Because they actually try to explain in their blindness that you can throw a 15 rocks up a billion times, and one of those times it's going to land in a perfect line or each rock line. It doesn't ever happen. What we see is created. And if it's created, there is a creator. Mm -hmm. And that causes a person to face the reality that we're not just happenstance, that we Mm -hmm. are actually created. And if we're created by someone, then, or something, however you want to put that, then there is that's there's something associated with that. That there's that there's a reason that we are created. But not only is it is it clear, uh, it also is conversational. 
because no one comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him, Jesus said. So the, the God of the universe, he, his desire is that no one would perish, mm -hmm. that everyone would come to the cross. The, the picture of the cross is Jesus with his arms wide open for everyone. Yeah. And, and, and those that actually heed the voice of the Lord, who actually respond when they, they look at the stars and go, wow, somebody created that then God actually brings them to a place where they can be before Jesus and he can wrap his arms around them. Now, when I was first a believer, and I don't think this was an uncommon question that came up is, well, what about the, the poor guy that was born in a cave and raised by wolves? You know, how, how would he ever hear the gospel message? Well, here's the great thing about the God that we serve is that if in fact there was a guy outside of Disney that was born in a cave and raised by wolves, then I think that the God of the universe would send someone to share the gospel because yeah. there's a beautiful piece of someone coming and sharing the gospel yeah. so that the, the, the clarity uh, really is brought to a place where now they can make the decision. Absolutely. And, and that decision is a costly decision. Mm -hmm. It is, it's clear, it's conversational, but it's also costly. There is, the, the fact is that the price is paid by Christ. He is the one who has done this, which, which obviously opens then the way of Christ to everyone. Mm -hmm. Whosoever will may come. So this, this is incredibly inclusive. The way to the Lord is wide open, but it's a narrow way. While it's the same thing, while it's wide open, it is a narrow way. It's a straight gate. It's a, it, you don't have to, you can't bring all your junk here. Well, I, I want all my junk and Jesus. That's not how it works. It is Christ alone. He is the way, not a way. He is the way. And so uh, we want you to capture this because we want you to be very clear. Uh, we're very clear about this. And, and it's not, we're not trying to say, uh, you know, oh, look at us. We have, we found this secret knowledge. We, we're not trying to keep this a secret. We're trying to publish every, everywhere, every day with everyone uh, through miracles, through the Christ life, through this ministry that we're going to talk about next week. But here's the reality. There is only one way, and we are people of the way. And so we want to encourage you uh, not to find a better church, not to find a better sermon, not to find a better podcast, not to find a better theology, but to get to know Jesus personally. And so, Father, we pray that in Jesus' name that each and every one will find themselves through you as people of the way. We believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that this time together has been a blessing to you, and it doesn't have to end here. You can go and back and watch last week's sermon on Facebook, YouTube, or listen to the podcast. Once again, thank you for making the time to connect and for choosing to be here. Let us know in the chat if you'd like to get further involved in one of our life groups. God bless you. And we hope to see you next week.